One day in November 1532, the New World and the Old World collided. 168 Spaniards attacked the Imperial Army of the Incas in the highlands of Peru. Before the day was out, they had massacred thousands of Inca warriors and taken control of the Inca Empire. In spite of a massive imbalance in numbers, Spanish horses, swords, and strategy proved decisive. But the Spaniards possessed another weapon they didn't even know they had, a weapon of mass destruction that had marched invisibly ahead of them. Today, the war against infectious disease is waged at biological research centers, like this one in southern England. They produce vaccines against the world's deadliest viruses, but in the 16th century, there were no vaccines, and there was no protection from the rampant spread of infectious disease. About 12 years before the Spanish and Inca armies clashed, a Spanish ship sailed to Mexico. On board, one of the slaves was suffering from the first signs of a fever. The disease was smallpox. Within months, the smallpox virus would spread to infect thousands of Native Americans. Smallpox gets into the body when you breathe in the particles and they attach themselves to the back of your throat and the inside of your lungs. About two to three days into the illness, then the classic rash appears. And in its worst forms, this takes over the whole of the body with initially pimples and then enormous blisters until the whole of the skin, starting with the hands and the face and then spreading down to cover the rest of the body, is taken over by the smallpox blisters. From that time on, the patient is highly infectious. Because each of those blisters is packed full of smallpox particles, then if you burst the blister, the fluid will come out and large numbers of viruses will be spilled onto whatever it touches. Ten to twelve days later, his friends would begin to be taken ill. And then ten to twelve days after that, their friends. That kind of rate means the disease spreads exponentially. Its rate of increase gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more people are infected, until eventually it will cause tremendous devastation in the population. The first smallpox epidemic of the New World swept from Mexico, through Central America, and reached the Inca Empire. Wherever it went, the virus decimated native populations, making Spanish conquest easier. But why did the Spaniards pass their diseases on to the Incas and not the other way around? This is Pizarro's secret weapon. Pigs and cows, sheep and goats, domestic animals. Remember that Pizarro was a swine herd. He grew up in huts like this in intimate contact with domestic animals, breathing in their germs, drinking the germs in their milk and it was from the germs of domestic animals that the killer diseases of humans evolved. For example, our flu evolved from a disease of pigs transmitted by chickens and ducks. We acquired measles from cattle. We acquired smallpox from domestic animals. So that these worst killers of human people were a legacy of 10,000 years of contact with our beloved domestic animals. During the Middle Ages, infectious diseases such as smallpox swept through Europe and claimed millions of lives. But in each outbreak, there were always some people who were genetically better able to fight off the virus. These people were more likely to survive and have children. Over centuries, some populations acquired a degree of protection against diseases like smallpox, a protection the Incas never had. There's been a long debate about the number of indigenous people who died in the Spanish conquest of the New World. Some scholars think the Native Americans numbered as high as 20 million people, and the vast majority, perhaps 95%, were killed by Old World diseases, a continent virtually emptied of its people. <laughs>